Organizations across the globe are rapidly adopting AI, and C-suite execs are demanding alignment. The reality is that AI isn't going anywhere, and learning how to use AI and build it into your workflows is going to become a critical skill in 2025. Hi there, I'm Christopher Sandval. I'm a product marketer and developer relations expert, and I'm here to make your product and your marketing just a little bit better. And today, I'm gonna to help you learn AI in five minutes. Let's go. So the current phase of AI is really based around these things called large language models. In essence, they take words and concepts and they turn them into numbers, things called tokens. From here, the models can use those tokens in a variety of ways. They can generate new text, analyze existing text, even pull out the sentiment of a sentence appearing in that text. The long and the short of it is that AI learns from the data that it's trained on. It's able to do tasks that humans usually do as long as that data exists in the system. And while they're currently limited by what they can do based on the data that they've trained on, they're getting better every single day. This is what AI used to look like. And now look at what it could do today with the exact same prompt. Spaghetti-based marketing is the new NFT, surely. So with this in mind, let's dive into learning AI. So lesson one, you need to learn the common categories of AI solutions on the market right now. Text models can generate copy, reply to emails, even generate code. Now it can only generate content based on the data that it's been trained on, but these data sets are getting larger and more involved. And certain models are way better at this process than others. So you're definitely going to need to experiment. Jump from model to model, see which model works with your flow. Image and video generation like Dolly, Midjourney, and Runway ML can generate everything from product concepts to thumbnails, even full-blown videos. Now these models tend to generate artifacts, so you're going to need to keep a close eye on the quality of content that you're generating to make sure that you don't enter that uncanny valley. And certainly don't just feed this content into production. And finally, there's automation AI. Now this kind of AI can do a wild amount of things. It can open a browser window to find you concert tickets. It can go through your emails and auto summarize by sentiment and topic. These models are really powerful, but again, they do very different things. So it's often helpful to jump from model to model depending on your workflow to see which one works best. Lesson two, understand that AI does not replace, it augments. Now AI is best used when it doesn't replace a person and doesn't replace a workflow, but instead augments the work of that person or makes the workflow more efficient. Instead of dropping in AI to replace your customer service flow, you should use it to identify the reasons for an order fulfillment failure or even identify hidden costs in the flow itself. Another great example of this is that you shouldn't use AI to generate copy. It can generate ideas, but you should just push the copy straight to production. You have to keep in mind that AI often hallucinates, but it's much more efficient than humans at most tasks. Now this process of augmenting a human flow is called human in the loop. And right now it's the best of both worlds. Now lesson three is probably the most important of these lessons. You need to learn how to prompt. More context and explicit instructions is always going to generate a better response. Your goal here is to augment your thinking. So treat it like a second brain. My preferred format here is RGF, role, goal, and format. Tell the AI what role you want it to take, then explain the goal and then give a format for the output that it's going to generate. Don't say, write me an email. Instead say, you're a business person writing a friendly but professional email. Please write a polite follow-up to this email and ask for a status update on the proposal that I sent last Monday. Don't say, do my homework. Instead say, you are a patient teacher who wants to help me understand this task. I currently don't understand how to do this problem. Please review the uploaded document and walk me through each step. Make sure you challenge my understanding at each step so that I really understand how this problem is solved. At the end, please give me a summary of everything that we learned and give me a little bit of a test so that I know that I've actually retained this information. Now lesson four, understand the difference between agents, APIs, and applications. AI comes in a few forms and you're going to have to understand them in order to learn how to engage with each. Now agents are purpose-built AI systems. They're designed to do a specific goal. For instance, a chat window offering customer service on a mattress website would be an agent. Now APIs power a lot of these systems, but they are distinct. An API is sort of a Rosetta Stone. It helps you connect different machines to other machines. For instance, an AI API allows you to remotely make a request to what you would 
typically considered ChatGPT. Applications, or especially web applications, are sort of the most well-known implementation of AI. They're little packaged instances that allow you to connect directly to the AI systems and models without having a lot of the complexity. Lesson five, you don't have to directly use AI. There's lots of integrations with AI that don't necessarily scream, hey, this is AI. Not everything is just talking to ChatGPT or Claude. A couple good examples here, but for the average user, you may not even know that AI is powering 90% of your favorite tools. Now, lesson six, don't be dumb. AI augments your intelligence, it doesn't replace it. So be smart with how you use AI. AI can be wrong. It can hallucinate. It can make up facts. So you should always double check no matter what your workflow is and no matter what tools you're using. Don't input private data unless you trust the model and have local control. You still need to do the legwork to validate sources to make sure that code actually works and to review generated content. And that's it. You should now know how to use AI or at least how to do the basic things with AI. And the next steps are simple. Open up your favorite tool and experiment. The more you use AI, the better you're going to get it. And in 2025 and beyond, using AI, at least in some stage of your workflow, is going to be a critical skill. Those who adopt AI as augmentation are going to have a huge leg up. So open your favorite tool, ask it to solve a problem, and see what it does. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this kind of content, you can find me over on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. So follow me if you're interested, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.